So our topic today is a provocative one, and I think a really interesting one, at the heart of what we do and what our products are about. Does uh, synthetic or chemical fertilizer damage beneficial soil microbes? And that answer, I think, will surprise many of you. So we're here at a project that we're working on right now, and we're doing a series of videos that we're going to put all together into one and show you from beginning demolition in the design right through to the end. That's something you're going to want to watch, so uh, subscribe to our channel. As part of this project, I think we're going to address the very most important part of landscaping and gardening, which is the subject of this video, and that is the health of your soil. I'm John Valentino, president of John and Bob's Corporation, and I'm a landscape architect and a landscape contractor. We also uh, are general engineering contractors, meaning we do all kinds of construction. We try to put that all into one kind of uh, expertise that we apply to projects like this, where we rehab houses or do all types of even commercial jobs involving all types of construction. And I'm here with Chip Valentino, who uh, has a, a new job title um, this week, adding to vice president and treasurer. He's in charge of all social media. And in that position, he responds to all of your comments. So I hope um, you're polite. And uh, it really hurts our feelings. I think more mine than Chip's when you say these uh, nasty things that I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but Chip will be responding to those, and uh, so keep it nice, keep it kind, and don't uh, destroy my self-esteem. Does chemical fertilizer damage beneficial soil microbes and, in effect, damage your soil? Most organic gardeners will say yes, and, most, and many organic um, Soil scientists that kind of specialize in the organic angle of gardening say yes. My best interpretation of the science and even my practical experience is the answer is no. Um, that if chemical fertilizers are used as per label uh, at a proper frequency and in a, and in a proper amount, they do not um, damage soil microbes. Many of you probably experience mysterious deaths of plants, or you know, you plant a vegetable garden and one will suddenly wilt, or all of a sudden a shrub or a tree will decline, and these things are mysterious, and usually we don't know what's going on. It can almost always be attributed to the soil, and um, by my experience, it's almost always due to some kind of negative microbe, so a bad um, a microbial problem. In, if you're using synthetic fertilizer, most likely you're relying on just synthetic fertilizer and you're not focused on building microbiology in the soil. And if you don't focus on building microbiology in the soil, usually you'll rely on some kind of chemical uh, response. And that chemical response will damage, will definitely damage the soil. And it's building the soil that's our only hope for making it so we don't get those mysterious diseases. That's the way to make sure that plants stay healthy. It's, it's underneath the soil. It's those beneficial bacteria and fungi and protozoa and good nematodes. And frequently, the problem is some kind of destructive nematode doesn't always have to be a root knot nematode. Bad nematodes can affect plants in many ways. Sometimes you can't see it on the roots. What's the best way to get rid of bad nematodes? With good nematodes. How do you make sure you have good nematodes? You do all these organic inputs into your soil. If you're doing those inputs, that's what our whole program is built around, where every time we do an input, uh, input we want it to build the microbiology of the soil. If we are using chemical inputs, we're most likely not building the soil. And even though the proper use of a chemical fertilizer won't damage the soil, many other things do damage the soil. Chlorine in the water, compaction, 
lots of things damage the soil, resulting in lifeless soil or soil that's just not well developed in terms of a complex mix of microbes. It's that complex mix of microbes that is essential to make sure we don't get pests and diseases. So a properly timed and proportioned um, application of synthetic fertilizer doesn't damage soil microbiology. You can damage soil microbiology with over applications and too frequent applications. And so chemical fertilizer is definitely uh, a pollutant to groundwater and surface water and a pollutant even to at the atmosphere. Uh, but in terms of damaging, technically damaging uh, soil microbiology, the the whole protocol of synthetic fertilizer damages it, but, but synthetic fertilizer itself can be useful, occasionally used to address the shortage of certain um, micronutrients and macronutrients. I try to avoid it, but if it's useful, um, I recommend its use uh, occasionally, and it can be used without direct damage to microbes. So frequently, one of the problems that develops if you are using synthetic fertilizer is you're not, you're someone that believes that synthetic fertilizer, so just directly feeding the plant and not feeding the soil is okay. And that results in soil that is deficient. And it's a fact that complex soil life is the key to keeping plants healthy. And there's all kinds of mechanisms in play um, that make that a reality. We just talked in point one about uh, this example of um, root knot nematodes and other destructive nematodes that aren't as strong as good nematodes. So the best way to control them is with good nematodes. And the way to build good nematodes in your soil is build complex life in your soil. So you've got this automatic pest and disease preventer uh, just by uh, controlling nematodes with good nematodes. About 75% of pests, that their life starts in the soil in some kind of larvae form. And if it starts in the soil and you have lots of soil activity, most of those destructive pests will be eaten or devoured or done away with in some way by beneficial uh, microbes. Um, which could include uh, good nematodes. Other interesting ways that uh, life in the soil impacts pest and disease is there's a substance called chitin, and chitin helps form the cell walls of bacteria and fungi, and it's a main component of the exoskeleton of insects and worms. Chitinase is the naturally occurring enzyme which breaks down chitin to create chitosan, a natural pesticide and fungicide that plants make on their own. When a plant detects chitin, which is part of the makeup of bad insects that are about to be a pest and disease, the plant knows it's being attacked and it will start making chitinase uh, given proper soil properties, so given lots of life in the soil. If you're only using synthetic fertilizer and you're not building your soil, your plants aren't going to make chitinase. But if your plants start making chitinase, then they'll break down uh, chitin to create this chitosan, uh, which is a pesticide. In this way, many plants produce their own insecticide and fungicide, relying on soil life as its source to access the necessary enzymes. Another uh, factor that soil life is a, a, a major part of is that most pests lack a liver. So all those pests that you detest in your garden don't have a liver, and they can't digest high concentrations of amino acids. If your soil is full of life, your plants will have high concentrations of amino acids, and that's what very healthy plants possess, and they won't be as attractive to um, pests, and, pests and even diseases. So life in the soil not only affects pests and disease, it really affects every part of gardening. Even parts that you would never imagine are connected to soil life, soil health, soil tilth, soil microbiology. The next one that's most uh, mind-blowing to a lot of people is weeds. 
that you can impact um, the occurrence of weeds by the soil microbiology. Look at this uh, natural redwood forest and notice that you really don't have weeds um, and yet nobody's out there putting a pre-emergent on or spraying Roundup or doing anything for weed control. So why is it that it doesn't get weeds? It doesn't get weeds because it's mostly fungally dominated and, and a fungally dominated soil in a forest like this has very few weeds uh, or none. What we're trying to do with our products is produce more advanced soils that have not just bacteria, uh, people seem to understand bacteria is important, but we need to get beyond bacteria. Bacteria is the lowest form of life. We need to have fungi and protozoa and good nematodes. We get this complex life. It not only addresses the pests as we just talked about, but it addresses weeds producing something more like this redwood forest, you can see the area where we've improved um, and we took out all the weeds, weeds just mechanically and right next to it we left all the weeds. This shows a soil that's more bacterial dominated with all the weeds, which is how this soil was when we arrived here, not a particularly healthy soil from an advanced standpoint of microbiology. So what we're going to do is we're going to plant plants, we're going to mechanically get rid of the weeds, we're going to put products in here that can feed uh, fungi and protozoa and good nematodes, and we're going to try to move this along with the soil food web so we get more advanced microbiology. In addition to that, we're going to use a very generous layer of mulch. That mulch will inhibit um, the germination of weeds and it'll protect the soil in many ways. I don't know if you know, but even rainfall is damaging to soil that's not protected by a layer of mulch. It protects it from rainfall, which has tremendous amount of force on it and causes weed problems and um, even compaction. And we're going to protect it from the sun and the wind and the rain with this layer of mulch with products like uh, maximize and optimize and nourish biosol underneath it. We're going to build that soil. We're going to try to create this advanced soil microbiology more like the redwood uh, forest ecosystem where weeds are much less predominant. So if you're just using synthetic fertilizer and you're not building the soil, then you are not building a garden that discourages uh, weed germination and uh, and the predominance of weeds. So what our question really comes down to, does uh, chemical fertilizer um, damage soil life and soil microbes, is different approaches to gardening. If you're doing soil-based gardening, which is what the John and Bob's line of products is all about, we're all about building life in the soil. We think that's the most important part of gardening, is building life in the soil. And if you do that, then occasionally using synthetic fertilizer doesn't damage soil microbes. But if you do synthetic fertilizer or other chemicals, pesticides, fungicides particularly, then you're creating an environment where the plants are just relying on the inputs, on your inputs, rather than on the soil. And if they're just relying on your inputs, you're going to have all kinds of problems. You're going to have more weeds. You're going to have more fungus. You're going to have more um, mysterious diseases. You're going to have more um, nematodes. You're going to have more everything that you don't want. So what we're uh, promoting here is a soil-based system where Every input we do, rather than doing an input like a synthetic fertilizer input, let's first think, can I put something on there other than synthetic fertilizer, which synthetic fertilizer is only going to feed the plant. Can I put something on there that will feed the plant and the soil and allow me to build this life in the soil, more like that redwood forest. If I can build that life in the soil and have a soil-based gardening system, then I've created a system of gardening that is more productive and less uh, prone to pest and disease. Our products are all won't burn, easy to apply, and release very slowly, friendly to the environment, 
If you want to learn more about them, go to our website, johnandbobs.com, the easy way uh, to purchase them online. If you're interested in this topic of um, soil-based gardening, we did another video, Most Important Gardening Tips for Beginners. And it's related to what we just talked about, uh, that the most important part of gardening is life in the soil. It impacts everything about gardening. Watch it now, see uh, what you think of it, and let us know.